Hello, welcome back to the, the next in our series here of uh, video uh, tutorials on the uh, use of the IDF to PH toolkit. I'm Ed May with Building Type and uh, glad you could um, uh, join us for this. Um, I'm going to finish up our, our discussion here of our domestic hot water systems by taking a look at recirculate, or excuse me, by branch level, at branch level, uh, piping. So we'll, we'll take a look at how we fill out the branch piping uh, inputs, and that'll um, uh, pretty much finish up our, our domestic hot water inputs here. So if you've been following along, um, you've, seen, you've seen that we uh, built out a, a simple domestic hot water system and, and applied a, a tank. So we used mostly default values, but we, we saw how we can control and set any of those parameter values that we want. Uh, we also took a look at branch, uh, or excuse me, recirculation piping, and how we can pull data in from the Rhino side and use the, the new domestic hot water recirc uh, uh, tool on the Rhino side to set some parameter values for, for some simple curves that, that, that will represent the domestic hot water in our, in our model. Um, and, and so the last piece here that we really just need to build out is our branch piping. So, so going from the, either from the tank out to the, the, the tap or from the research loop out to the tap. Um, e e either way uh, would work for, for our purposes here. So um, um, before, we, before we jump in, again, let's take a look at the PHPP and just make sure we, we know what we're being asked to, en to enter. And then we'll take a look at how we uh, model that using the IDF to PH toolkit here. So uh, as you can see on the, the lower section of the screen, um, we have a, the active PHPP open in the domestic hot water and distribution worksheet. And um, we're taking a look at the domestic hot water individual piping section right now. And notice that this is um, a fair bit uh, less complex. There's less inputs than the research piping element. And all we're being asked to input here is the, um, the pipe diameter for the, the individual um, branch piping um, the uh, the total length of all of the piping, and then the number of tap points in the building. Um, so the the number, or the, rather, really, I should say the number of tap points on that set of um, of piping. And 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 as with the recirculation piping, you can see here we have the ability to model up to five sets, or five groups, or five banks of piping. Now you don't have to model five banks or sets or groups of piping. You could, if all your piping is the same uh, diameter um, and it's used the same amount of times per year, um, then you could certainly just uh, add it all in, in one place. But you certainly have the ability, the opportunity to add uh, quite a bit of, of detail there, quite a bit of um, uh, level of detail. Uh, so up to five different banks can can be entered there, and and as as with um, as with the research piping, we'll see that uh, you can definitely do that with the um, with the grasshopper tools as well. So not a ton of information there that we're asked to enter. Um, notice um, importantly uh, that there is no input for insulation. Um, this is a little outside the scope of this uh, video, but you know just remember that the um, the research piping insulation matters greatly. But the assumption in the PHPP is that no matter how well insulated your branch level piping is, that the occupants will flush the branch piping before using the hot water. So any heat, any thermal energy, which stays behind inside of the pipe, the branch piping, will eventually come into the space, be, be sort of lost into the space. So no matter how well insulated your branch piping is, it's not going to affect you when it comes to overall heat loss. It's a pretty conservative assumption, but not probably not too far off. Most people don't like to um, wash their hands with lukewarm water, uh, and, and so most of us are, are going to flush out, even if there's a little bit of uh, thermal energy left in that water, uh, probably going to flush it out um, until the hot water is, is really flowing before, you know, uh, uh, washing your hands or, or, or bathing or anything like that. So uh, anyway, just um, something to keep in mind. When, um, so there is no insulation input here. There is just length and number. So a simpler, simpler component for sure. So let's go back to our, our grasshopper and our rhino scene here, and we'll take a look at how we use these to, um, uh, or how we how we would model those type of systems. So let's take a look here at our domestic hot water system. So if you again, if you're following along, you have a system that looks something like this. So you've got a um, a domestic hot water system, which has been created and then applied to a set of honeybee zones. Uh, we have a tank which has been added to our system, and we have some research piping, some recirculation piping, which has also been added to the system. So what I would like to do now is go in and add some 
branch piping. So I'm going to go to the building type rollout, go to the 01 model, and then I'm going to come down to the domestic hot water section. And here you can see we have a, a component, a domestic hot water piping branch component. So I'm going to grab this component and drop this onto the canvas. And let me just reorganize here a little bit to sort of clean things up, sort of pull this guy down and give us a little bit of room here. Okay. So you can see our branch piping object is a fair bit simpler. It will accept pipe geometry. Uh, again, it will accept pipe geometry either as just a, a single set um, or up to five sets. And if you're going to pass in additional sets, more than one sets, you need to organize those sets using the entwine or some other uh, native grasshopper component to, um, uh, to organize the data of those sets into a data tree. So into a data tree. That's how you need to pass information if you want to pass more than one set of geometry here. Other than that, the only thing that we're going to be asked to input is going to be the diameter of the piping uh, and the number of tap openings. Um, the default there is going to be um, six openings per person per day. So again, we'll have some default values here. You're not going to have to input everything, but of course you have the opportunity to override or set any of these values if you like, if you wish to change them. So let's see, how are we going to build out our branch piping here? What do we get uh, by default? Let's take a look at what we get as a default object. We get nothing. So we have no default that comes out. Um, and the simplest way for us to build some branch piping is to just tell, is to just say, um, I don't know, how about 10 meters total of branch piping? So if we just pass in a value, just pass in a number into this pipe geometry, notice here we, we get a pipe, uh, domestic hot water branch piping object with a diameter, a, a total length, 10 meters, a number of tap points, one. So we only passed in one number, so only one tap point. And then a uh, um, number of tap openings, uh, that's the default six, and a utilization period, the default 365. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, if we if we um, know where to ten come from, uh, maybe you know I just made it up. Um, but maybe you would go through your plumbing and you would actually measure each length, and so you would actually enter them as a list of values. So maybe you've got one um, chunk of piping which is one point four meters, and you've got a second um, bit of piping which is. 0.6 meters and a third bit of piping which is 11.4 meters etc so maybe you've got a bunch of piping so we can add those in as a list of items and the only thing we need to do to make this work is just set this to be a multi-line input so we're passing a list of information and notice here that the total length is just going to sum up all of those values that you passed in so you can certainly pass in an itemized list of all of your branch piping elements that's just fine and of course, at any point, I could come in and I could override any of these values for things like diameter or tap openings uh, per day, etc. So that's definitely one way that we can work with this component. We can absolutely just pass in a list of numbers uh, that's perfectly acceptable, um, and that'll get us a, a bunch of information. But the other way, and the way that I prefer to work with this component, is to actually pass in geometry. So to actually model the elements in the scene and pass those in um, uh, here into our, um, into our pipe geometry. So let me delete this out. Notice our, our output goes away here. And let me reorganize here a little bit and give us a little more room. Let's take a look at our, um, our Rhino scene a little more closely. So we're going to do a little modeling in Rhino. Now we are on the domestic hot water recirculation layer right now. So I'm actually going to make a new layer, domestic hot water. Uh, branch branches How about that so that'll be our domestic hot water branch layer let me close this up so we have a little more room here and now let's just draw in a couple of branches on that layer so i don't know i'm just going to make some things up here so you know if we had a piping plan or something maybe we would be more accurate but let's say maybe there's a sink over here so i don't know I'll come up 24 inches and so maybe there's one sink here and maybe there's i don't know maybe there's a maybe there's a shower over here so that'll come up about you know five feet or something like that so that'll come up about five feet or so um and so notice that these guys are coming off and maybe maybe they are actually sort of over in the space and so maybe we sort of tap off the let me join these Maybe, they, maybe we tap off the recirc loop at some point 
um, something like that, right? Maybe they're maybe they're more like that, and they're they're actually sort of out in the space. Uh, you know, we're just making this up as we go along here. Um, if you had a, a plumbing plan or a floor plan, you'd obviously be a lot more um, intentional and, and sort of you would you would know exactly where you're pl putting these things. But maybe we've got a sink here. Maybe we've got a I don't know a refrigerator over here, right? You've got a I don't know. A, well, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be hot water. What else would be hot water? I don't know. Um, some other some other element that needs hot water. Um, you, so we've got one here, and just for purposes of argument, let's say that we've got a another one over here. You've got a slop sink or something, you know, a mop sink or, or something like that. So we've got a couple of different elements here that are coming uh, over, and I don't know. Just for again purposes of argument, let's put this one over here just to give us something to model, right? So we've got our recirc loop running down the middle. And then we've got all of our tapping elements, our branches, coming off of the recirc loop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab all of those recirc elements. So we've got our recirc elements here. And I'm going to come back to Grino, or Grasshopper, and I'll do a curve. Now I could be using a pipeline for this. That would work fine. Um, in this case, I'm showing it as a more explicit reference. So say set multiple curves. We'll say that this is our branch piping. So these are our branch piping objects. And we'll just do this for consistency. So all of our inputs have the same sort of styling. And so we're going to take this branch piping and I'm just going to feed that into my branch piping object here. And so I'll just grab the output and drop it into my pipe geometry input. And notice as soon as I do that, now over here I get a a good branch piping object and notice I get a total length of 16 meters so that's summing up the length of all of these various curves um, notice there's no there's no parameter assignment that we have to do we don't really care about the insulation thickness or anything like that um, we do have a diameter here which you know we could set over in Rhino if we wanted to um, but we could you know just as easily sort of set it here so maybe it's maybe they're um, I don't know what do we have half inch so you know maybe they're maybe they're Three quarter inch or something for some reason, right? We can set that. We can set our diameter here. The diameter being in millimeters in this case. So this would be a, a millimeters input. The default of, is going to be a, about a half inch or a half inch. So we can build out our circulation piping in this manner. Let's go back and let's take a look at our PHPP and see. Oh, well, let's pass this in first. So let me delete this. Um, now, what I need to do with this element is I need to connect the branch piping output to the branch piping input. So as soon as I connect branch piping output to branch piping input, we should see some writing in our PHPP. And sure enough, here in our individual piping section, you see we've got our 19 millimeter or 0 0.019 meter, uh, 16 meter length, and number of tap points is just the number of elements. So here, so here you can see we've got four. So one, two, three, four. Right. So we've got four elements, and then these values obviously can be assigned here in our um, uh, in our, our grasshopper scene. And just as with before, if, if for whatever reason I wanted to organize these into multiple banks for some reason, so maybe let's do it this way. Let's say I've got these two, and I'll put those two into this one, and I'll put these two into the first one. So I'll say set one, and set two. If I want to pass both of these then, all I need to do is add them or put them together using an entwine component. Right, so these need to be organized as a data tree, just like our recirculation. So that's pretty easy. I just grab a native entwine component and I'll pass in set one into path one. I'll pass in set two into element two. And by default, when you use an entwine, you get these three elements. So we'll just go in here and delete the third element, uh, make sure that that's not getting passed through. And I'm going to replace the input here of pipe geometry with my resultant uh, data set. If we take a look at the sort of data output here, um, as we were looking at before, we have path one, zero, zero. So zero, zero. And I've got two lines coming in. So those are my first two lines here. Then I've got path zero, one. That corresponds to path 01, and I've got those two pipes coming in, and those are my two inputs over here. Okay. So I've got two different sets of inputs um, uh, for those elements. 
And all I need to do is take the output there, pass it into my pipe geometry. This will do a little work. And over here, if you take a look at our output in our pipe geometry, we get two branch piping objects. And if we take a look at the parameter values there, notice that we've got one domestic hot water branch piping object with a diameter, a total length, and some information. Then we've got a second domestic hot water branch piping. This is our second set, which has a different length input there. And if we go take a look at our PHPP, notice now we have one and two sets input from our values, or from our, our grasshopper scene. So we're, we're building out two distinct sets of branch piping here. You know, if for whatever reason I wanted to um, do them separately, I wanted to assess them separately, um, I can absolutely do that uh, in, in this case. All right, so a lot of flexibility, a lot of ways that we can work with this. If we uh, now take a look at our, our um, overall um, PHPP, if I open it up here and um, scroll down to the uh, scroll down towards the bottom, oops, and over to the right hand side, you'll see we're now getting a good total heat loss or uh, energy consumption for our domestic hot water system. So we now have a good total value for our domestic hot water system that's going to flow into our primary energy demand uh, and be part of our, our overall uh, certification compliance. It's going to be really critical for assessing um, internal heat gains in the summertime, overheating risk, as well as just straightforward energy consumption for, uh, for hot water um, when it comes to our primary energy total. So I think we will leave it there. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there are There is one other component that we haven't looked at, which is just this usage object, but it's pretty straightforward. You, you, would just, um, you would just hook it up to the usage input, and it allows you to set things like the amount of hot water which is used for showers, the amount of hot water which is used for um, all other purposes uh, or, or the like. So um, uh, relatively straightforward. So hopefully that all made sense. The, the only trick with, the, with these components is just that you have to organize all your input geometry into data trees. Other than that, they work very, very similar to everything else that we've seen in our IDF to, to PH toolkit. So I hope that uh, I hope that helped. I hope that uh, made sense. Hopefully you're able to um, uh, uh, make your project work in the same way and, and get to the same point here. So I will. Uh, I think we'll cut that off there, uh, here, and I'll um, I'll look forward to um, uh, seeing everybody back for the the next series of videos. We'll take a look at some other system information. We'll look at um, maybe we'll take a look at um, cooling systems, heating systems, and how we set up the primary energy uh, elements of our of our project here, and start start taking a look at our our overall results for our building. Now that we've got most of the elements fleshed out here, so I think we'll cut this off here. Um, thanks everyone, and I'll uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.